All righty, guys. Got Wes here. Wes wants to go ride on our Wednesday night ride. We're going to start those up here this week. And if you guys remember correctly, on the 650, we were having ignition issues. It wouldn't rev out all the way. So we're going to dig the 650 down. And in order to do that, we need the forklift. And of course, the forklift battery is dead because batteries and tires do not last out here in the desert. So this battery has been about three years. That's about all we get out of them. So we're going to have to jump start it in order to get the forklift running. Ooh. And it's a two-man job. Right. We've done this before. Oh! See? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to cut that out. Nah, I'll leave it in. Oh, I'm reading my battery backwards. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want arc welder mode, we want jump start <laughs> mode. Okay. Wiggle it. Don't grind it like that when it when, it, when it's motor spins faster than the starter. Please. Okay, go ahead. Oops. Oops, hang on. All right, contact. First try, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> I hope Snap-on didn't see that. It says, do not use as pin crunch or pry bar. It doesn't say nothing about a jump starter. You've been with Merlin. You've aged a lot. <laughs> okay. Get your get your phone out, Wes. What are we doing? Actually, I guess I'll need to do that. Okay. So. See this down here? Yep. This is the electrical box. See this black box here? Yeah. That's the CDI. The CDI has three wires going into the electrical box through this rubber grommet here. The CDI. There's two bolts that unbolt the CDI, okay? And then the wires, the wires are gonna go into the box here. There's three wires. There's provisions for four wires. Mm -hmm. So when you take these four bolts of this black cover off, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, take these two bolts out, the CDI lays down, and then there's two bolts behind it for the blue box, and there's one bolt down here in the center. See my finger down there? My index sure. finger? Yeah. Under there, there's a, you can reach under there and feel that single bolt. Yeah. Okay, that single bolt, and that whole box will come out, and you can lift that box up and set it up here. Okay. When you take the four bolts off, one, mm -hmm. Put your camera over here. One, two, three, four. That separates. When it separates, you're going to see a bunch of wires grounded to a. You're going to see a bunch of wires grounded to a grounding post. You're going to make a grounding wire to come out of that same grommet where that extra hole is. Mm -hmm. And you, what I did is, you, what you do is your razor blade them so it opens up and you can put a yeah. wire down in there. And you're just going to run a wire to the battery for the ground. Okay. If we ground the battery straight to the ignition. It should, right now it's only going up to about 5,000 RPM. We're actually going to put a tack on it and we'll see what the RPM is doing. But it runs out, it runs out of uh, 
It blows the spark out at yeah. full throttle. So we want it to go faster. If we can get it going faster, I think it's just a, a rogue grounding issue where the electrics aren't grounded to the, the battery properly. So if we run our own ground wire, we'll know right away. Yeah. And then, uh, then we should be good to go. That's tomorrow's project. I can't store it with the handle pull spring on because it doesn't lay down far enough. It scratches itself on the, the thing. So I have to disassemble the handle pull spring so it lays down flat. And since we don't compress the spring, it doesn't damage it. And as you can see, we just, it's just as nice as it was last season. Or just as strong or just as solid, however you want to translate that. Hmm. All right. Cool. So you know what you're doing tomorrow, right? I'll figure it out. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know you. Know. I know you. Know. And what we do, we need to set up the electrics. And uh, so, you, you, I mean, it's, it's a ground wire. It's simple. Yeah. It'll take you longer to take it apart and put it together than it will to crimp <laughs> the wire and set it in there. Yeah. So just run, run it along this. See these goofy little things here? Yeah. You'll just run it along there to the battery. Just shove it in yeah. there. And... Like I said, there's a spot for it to come to the waterproof part. Be careful when you put the box together. I don't pinch a wire. Dude, the man, he, it's been two years and he still remembers. That's awesome. Yeah, so we had an ignition on here and it went 39.9, 39.9 mm -hmm. mile an hour. Yeah. We changed the ignition to a fire breathing monster ignition. It went 39.9. <laughs> so it was running out of spark. At the same spot, hmm. so the only the only thing the only thing similar now is the stator. Yeah. If the stator is bad, then we got to change the stator, which is awful. <laughs> but so we're, gonna, we're gonna rule out all the other possibilities. That's right. Yeah. That. Before we pull the motor, yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, actually, so when a stator goes bad, it won't even run like over hmm. two thousand. Like you'll know. <laughs> you'll know. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Oh, not only that, but when the stator goes bad. It usually runs perfect when you first put it in the water, yeah. and as the engine starts heating up, yeah. the stator goes away with heat. It becomes a heat issue. Sure. So that's not happening. It, it's 40 mile an hour. Right off, right off the trailer, it's 40 mile an hour. Yeah. Half an hour later, it's 40 mile an hour. Sure. So I'm pretty sure it's a grounding issue, which is still stator, but we don't have to take the engine apart. We can just do a, a ground wire to the battery, and we're done. Yeah. And, then, and then in theory, it should, be, it should be several, like a couple mile an hour faster. With this, this is the better ignition. Yeah. So if we figure that out, then I got to take this ignition off, put the stock ignition back on to demonstrate where we're at with the stock ignition, and then we'll start. You know, we, we're gonna start modifying this, putting a bigger carburetor on it, making it faster, faster. All right. So we're getting ready for tomorrow here, and we got Wes all set up. He's gonna crimp us the first half of our ground wire. So show us what you got, Wes. <laughs> I was gonna say so. Hold hang, in hang here. On. So yeah. So basically, what you do is there's two little fingers in there. You gotta get them. Yeah, but see how this is the there. smaller one. This is smaller than the other side. Yep. So flip it back over. Okay, there you go. That's sweet. That's perfect. You do know what you're doing. Good. That's all I wanted to see. <laughs> Felt like it slid right out. No, oh, that's perfect. That's tight. There you go. So um, you know, that's the side you'll put in the ignition side, and then you'll, you'll run all the wire, then cut the rest later. All righty. Good job. All right. I'm on the 650. I'm going to retrace some grounds and try to get some more speed out of it. Um. <clears throat> I'm going into the electronics today. I'm going to try to re or ground the ignition just to try to get a couple more miles an hour. And I'm going to test it tomorrow when we go to the sandbar.
I'm inside whatever this box is actually called. It does something with ignition. And that is my ground wire right there. And that little bolt right there. That is what I need to tie the ground into. And then sneak it up through this hole. The rubber grommet to keep it waterproof. And then I run the wire from there down through these, which hold the wire up, and then to the negative of the battery. So I've already gone ahead and clamped on one of my one of my clamps. So I'll throw that in there, bolt that down, zip it across here, and then we're ready for the lake. This would have been easier to pull out of the ski, but that's a lot more bolts I have to pull out to do this. This would have been a lot easier out of the ski. Let's pull this thing apart, or out of the ski, to make all this easier. And bolt down there, and those two. I wonder if there's any on the inside. I doubt it, but. There's two more screws behind those. So, let's zip those out real quick. And the one on the bottom and this whole, whole assembly should fall out. So there's a screw at the bottom, and I can't, can't find it. There it is. Oh man. Alrighty. 
Let's see. Oh, this comes out. Okay. That's about as much as we're gonna get. Unless you can turn it. I don't, I don't believe you can. Okay. So, now if you zip this screw back out. Separate that. Set that up there. There's somewhere that it won't fall. Alright. These two wires need to go into that bolt. I guess that extension staying on there. This is turning out to be way harder than I expected. Okay. So this wire needs to go back in there. Okay. Now all of those need to stack back on. There's two. And then there's three. Two more. Four. On the ground. Just go straight in. Don't fight me. I think it worked. I just added this black wire. It went through that rubber grommet keep it waterproof and I added it to that bolt. Well, little did I know that there's five other wires underneath it there. So as soon as I took that bolt out, the whole thing exploded. So I had to trace all the, all the wires, put them all back in and add that ground. So now I got to bolt it all back together, put it back in the ski, run that wire over and then we're good. And then we'll be at the lake.
All right, so got all that done. It's all back together. The wires ran to the battery. There's not a battery in it, but when we put a battery in it, the wire runs. That's the wire. It runs down the side, little black one right there through those clips under the fuel pump. And then it just, and I think the battery, I'm not sure where the ground is or the negative on the battery is. So I left enough wire to go anywhere. So, yeah. Leave a comment how much faster we're going. So, uh, I left Wes to fix the ground wire on the ski. What do you think? Is it going to work? I think it's going to be perfect. So go ahead and roll that out here. We're going to get loaded up. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go on our Wednesday night sandbar run. So stay tuned. We'll actually see if we can get this thing started, fired off. Perfect. That's a good sound. Let me uh, find some. a splash. Actually, I should have the camera on you. Nice job, buddy. It works. That means we can go to the sandbar. Well, we can see if it goes to the sandbar. You can see uh, Wes got her all filled, filled up today. He got our we got our, uh, what do you call it, our oil tank filled up with fuel here because we got our oil tank feeding into our fuel tank. That'll be our reserve. And we got the fuel tank full. We got to stop at the gas station and get gas in my bullet boat. And uh, we're going to go to the lake and we're going to go on a nice long ride and we're going to whip on this thing. All right, so it's the first Wednesday night ride of the season and the, and the group is pretty slim. This guy claims he's got more buddies coming. We'll see him up the sandbar, but we're going to go ahead and get started. We thought more people would show up. But we'll see you guys out there. Alrighty guys, we made it to the sandbar here. You guys uh, saw Wes on the ski. The ski looks like it runs pretty good, but Wes is not really, I'd say he's still a beginner, but he's not a first timer. He's got about an hour or two on a stand up and we threw him to the wolves and sent him to the sandbar. What'd you think Wes, how'd it go? It went all right, I'd say. How's the ski run? It runs amazing. I mean, it runs pretty good, it looks like it runs pretty good. So yeah. I haven't got a chance to ride it yet, but it sounds like it's gonna rev higher. I can't wait to ride it. We'll do a GPS pass here shortly, but uh, but uh, so tell them about like tell them about how critical it is to drop to your knee if you get squirrel like if you get squirrely. Yeah, so if you like if you're going and it starts going out like out of control. If you're going when you're standing up. Yeah, if you're going and you're standing up and it gets out of control, you just drop to your knees 
and it stabilizes everything. It doesn't just, it doesn't kick out on you. It doesn't do anything. That's the best. That's the secret to riding a stand up. And he was doing it excellently. So I got some footage of it. I'm going to post that with the video. But that's really the that's really the most important thing is the lower your center of gravity, the lower your center of gravity, it multiplies how much easier it is to balance. Every every foot you stand up, it's like two to three times harder to balance. So that's why taller guys have a harder time learning to ride stand ups. But you did a great job, Wes. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody kind of backed out on us. It's, I don't know why. It's 80 degrees. The water's not that bad, and it's it's just really awesome out. It's still got some daylight left. I don't know if maybe we'll see somebody going back to the launch ramp. We may run across some people, but it's just us up here. As you guys can see, there's not a soul around. Except for me and Wes. There's me. <laughs> the diehards, I guess. But uh, we'll be going every Wednesday now from now till uh, after the finals. So stay tuned. Okay guys, so uh, we got back from the sandbar, Wes is in one piece, a little worse for wear, but uh, I'm going to go do a full throttle pass. I've got a GPS here. I guess I should probably reset it or something. Uh, let's see here. But anyway, stay tuned, we're going to go out there and do a pass real quick.
don't think it's any fast. I think it's exactly still 39.9. Yeah. It doesn't feel any faster. So that might be the limitations of our carburetor and pipe. Oh. 37.6. It's actually slower. Huh. <laughs> so. So now is that the wire or is that the No, wire? no, no, no. That's the kind of thing. I don't know. It could be carburetor. It could be a lot of things. Yeah. It could be the motor's worn out. This motor was worn out when I started. Yeah. So I may, I may start might, with a fresh might, motor. You might just be fighting a ticking time bomb or whatever. No, no, it is. You, you should see something. the video. You should see the video of me building this motor. Yeah. Like it's cobbled together. <laughs> like seriously, I, I, I put the... I took two bad crankshafts and built one semi-bad, semi-good one. 